Hello, boys and girls. This is Grandma Sheila, and our story today is called Discovery on the Mountainside. <laughs> Ellen and his cousin, they were all having a family reunion at his grandmother's house. Ellen, he turned to his cousin and he said, you know, I don't know that I believe in all that Jesus stuff anymore. You know, when I went into high school, it was kind of like it didn't seem important. And the Bible stories and things didn't seem real. So I don't even know if I believe anymore. His cousin kind of looked at him strangely. Well, then Alan got to thinking about his little grandma. She was kind of amazing. And every day she talked to God. And if you listen to her, it was like she was talking to a friend. And she was telling God about all the things that were going on. And she would thank him. And since they'd been there for the reunion, it just seemed like she would forget that all of them were there. And she would talk out loud to God. And she was telling him all about her new petunias and how well they were doing. You know, it would be nice to be able to talk to God like that, just as if he were our special friend, because he really is. Alan had decided when his family had said that they were going to go to this reunion on the West Coast where Graham lived. He had decided that while he was there, he was going to climb those big, lovely mountains. Well, now that they were there, you know, they had all gone to church and with Graham, and they were all dressed up in their suits and their special church shoes and that. Well, when they all got back, they'd had lunch. Ellen, he turned to his cousin and he said, come on, let's go climb the mountain. Well, his cousin thought that was a good idea. And Alan, who was old enough to drive now, had gone to his uncle. And his uncle said, yeah, you can take the pickup. It's out there. Here's the keys. And so Alan and his cousin had got in that little Datsun pickup and they drove up to the parking lot that was at the base of the mountain. Well, you know, there was nobody else in that parking lot. But the boys, they didn't think about that. And they didn't think about the fact that the uncle had said it was fine for them to take the pickup truck for a ride, but they hadn't told anybody that they were going hiking or where they were going. When they got there, they saw the path that led up the mountain. It was beautiful with trees on every side. It smelled lovely and there were big outcroppings of rocks and they could see up the side of the mountain well, Alan, he looked and he said, you know, if we climb up to where we see those trees up there, you know, it looks like that maybe there was a rock slide there and we could probably see up the rest of the mountainside. And that probably would be as far as we should go today. So they headed up the mountain and it was a fairly steep climb, but it was nice going. So pretty soon they came to that place where the rocks 
had slid down from the mountainside and it made like a tiny little valley all covered with rock. But when they got there, sure enough, they could see the rest of the mountain. It was a long ways up. But then Alan, he looked up and he saw a place. He said, look, there's that point up there. Let's just hike that much further. So up the mountain they went. And when they got there, it was gorgeous. And it looked like that maybe the top of the mountain wasn't so far away after all. So they went on about an hour and a half longer. Well, when they got there, the view was absolutely gorgeous. It felt like they were standing in the clouds and up ahead of them was the top point of the mountain. But Alan's cousin, he said, Alan, and he pointed to his watch. He said, it's almost five o'clock. We've got to go all the way back down. We won't be home before dark if we don't hurry. And I don't want to be up here on the mountain in the dark. It's pretty in the daylight, but not in the night. So they turned around and headed down the mountain. Well, they got part way down and the road forked. Now, there was a path that went so one that went one way and one that went the other way. But they didn't know which one to take. Finally, the cousin, he looked carefully at both of them and he said, well, that's the way we came up. But it's a long ways and look at the sky. It's getting close to being dark. And look, this other way goes down the mountain and it looks like it goes much faster. Let's take it. So hurriedly they started down that path and it wasn't too bad of a path at all. And so they were able to go fairly quickly and then Alan said, you know, I wished I had on something other than this suit and tie and my church shoes. They're not very good to climb in. And they kind of laughed to themselves at how silly they must look to everybody else. Well, then they came around a corner. They had gone about an hour down the mountain. And when they came around the corner, that path that they were on, it opened up into a big glacier. Do you know what a glacier is? Oftentimes, on the sides of the mountain, glaciers will form where water comes down and it freezes and then more water comes down and it freezes and the ice gets thicker and thicker and thicker till it covers the whole mountainside and there's nothing ahead of you but just ice with snow on it. Well, Alan took one look at that and he thought, um, it looks awfully steep and we've got these church shoes on. I, I don't think this is what we should do. But the cousin, he said, if we go back to the fork in the road, that's about an hour or more from here. Plus, we'll have all that way to go down the mountain in the dark. But if we go across the glacier, we can hit that path 
that's over at the other side, and we can go right straight down. Alan looked at that glacier, and he, he reluctantly said, Yeah, I guess we better go this way now. So his cousin started very carefully walking footstep upon footstep upon footstep over that ice. When they got partway across, they were so anxious to go quickly that they weren't looking for the patches of ice that were every so often amongst the snow. The cousin, he hid a patch of ice right in front of Alan. And he started sliding, 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 sliding down that ice. And Alan went, oh no. Because from where Alan stood, he could look down that glacier and he could see a rocky prominence that looked like it was the edge of the world. There was just a drop off on the other side. Alan, he started to rush to try to catch his cousin. But when he tried to rush, those slippery shoes just slid right out from underneath of him. And head first, he started down the mountainside after his cousin. Well, when they were getting close to that horrible precipice, that edge that just fell off down the mountainside, the cousin saw a rock that stood up out of the ice and snow. It wasn't very big. But Alan, as he was slipping and sliding past, he reached out and he grabbed that rock with both hands. Well, Alan was still sliding, but he came close to where his cousin was holding on to that rock for dear life. And he reached out with his hand and he grabbed his cousin's coat and he held on for dear life. Well, then his cousin realized that if he could just wiggle himself a little bit closer, he could throw his leg over top of that big rocky prominence. And he wiggled on the ice, still holding on with his hands. But when he got close, he took his leg and he threw it up over that rock. And there he hung. Well, Alan was still holding on tight to him. He reached out over his cousin's leg and grabbed hold of that rock as well. And there they were. It was going to be dark soon, and it was getting colder and colder. Imagine laying and sitting on ice. Well, they couldn't figure out what to do if they let go. They would go off that edge and they could hear the river who knows how far down the mountain at the bottom of it. They tried to think of make a plan, but they weren't getting very far. And you know, then Alan said, I don't know, but, but he hesitantly said, maybe. Uh, maybe we should pray. Well, his cousin looked at him and he said, you know, I don't believe in that stuff much. It's just, you know, things, angel stories and things like that only happen in mission stories. 
not to ordinary people like us. But, but, I don't mind if you pray. We have to use all our options. So, Alan started praying to himself. And before he knew it, he was praying right out loud to God, saying, if you're there and you can see us, please help us. We don't have anybody else to turn to. Please help us. Well, then all was silent for a little while. And then the wind started to blow. And it started howling over that glacier. It just seemed to slide over that ice. On the edge of the glacier, there were big boulders and the wind was whining around those boulders and moaning and it was starting to get dark. Ellen, he prayed some more. And when he thought that the only thing that was gonna happen to them was they were gonna freeze to death and slide off the mountain in the distance, a male voice called out and said, You there, are you guys in trouble? Well, both the boys, without letting go of that rock, turned their heads around and they looked. And there in the distance, they saw a man dressed in a red and black checked flannel coat and he had a rope over his shoulder and he said stay right there i'll come down and help you it wasn't too long till the boys could hear the man's crampons which are things that people put on the bottom of their boots when they're hiking in the snow and the ice and going over rocks. It has points in it that go down into the ice. Well, the boys could hear those crampons going crunch, crunch, crunch into the ice. And pretty soon, that big, tall man was standing above them. And he said, okay, you each take one of my hands, and I'm going to guide you off the glacier. <sighs> Were they ever thankful? That man was appeared really strong. He helped both boys stand up, and he said, now, make a plan before you move your foot anywhere. Make sure you know where you're putting it. Don't put it on the ice patches. And if you start to slide, don't stiffen up because that'll make it worse. So they held tightly onto that man's hand thanking God as they went for sending somebody to help them. When they got to the edge of the glacier, the man pointed to the path and he said, that's the way down the mountain. It's a good path. You'll, you'll do fine now. Well, the boys started down the mountain and realized, well, that was stupid. We didn't even thank him. They turned around. He wasn't behind them. They hurried down the path because they thought maybe while they were busy being thankful, he had passed them and gone on down the mountain. But he wasn't there. He had just vanished. Very quietly and deliberately, those boys walked the rest of the way down the mountain. And when they got to their uncle's pickup, 
they got inside. And you know, the cousin, he turned to Alan and he said, maybe grandma is right. Maybe there is a God that's there watching over us and caring for us. Come on, let's get down the mountain. You know, boys and girls, we never know when we get in trouble, when we might need help. And we're never alone because God is always listening and he can send us help, whether it be an angel dressed in a flannel red and black coat. We don't know how he can answer our prayers. But boys and girls, he is real and he's there and he wants to answer. Bye-bye now. I'll see you next week.